We're making a video today in honor of Ada Lovelace Day. This is an international day that is set aside to celebrate the achievements of women in science and engineering. And so as part of that day, people are encouraged to write about, tweet about, blog about, make videos about inspirational women in science. So Ada Lo Lovelace was actually the daughter of the famous po poet Lord Byron, um, though she never knew him. She was known as a mathematician and in fact is considered to be by some the first computer programmer. She worked together with Charles Babbage on his analytical engine and wrote down instructions uh, for calculating, making different calculations, which essentially are the basis of an algorithm or a computer program as we think of it today. And there's a computer language called Ada, which was named in her honor. But that's not what you're talking about, is it? No. So I have chosen someone to talk about who is enormously influential in my own field in galaxy evolution, and that is the astronomer Beatrice Tinsley. I've never heard of that person. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. Um, she died very young at the age of 40, but she had in her short life an enormous influence on certain aspects of astronomy and cosmology. I can give you a, a short biography, but a lot of the time when we talk about women scientists, we emphasize their struggles and their hardships and what they had to overcome to, to become who they were. And that's an important part of her story. Um, but I also very much want to talk about her science because that's what's really exciting. She was born in England, she was raised in New Zealand, uh, educated there where she got a degree in physics, married a fellow physics student, um, then they both went to the US. Her husband was employed at the University of Texas at Dallas. She decided she wanted to continue on and, and, and do her own uh, research in physics and astronomy, um, but there was nowhere at the University of Texas at Dallas that she could pursue that. So she began a part-time PhD at the University of Texas in Austin, which required a 400-mile round-trip commute every week. Despite that, she finished her PhD in under three years, which is a fraction of the time that a normal person, particularly in the uh, U.S. system, would take to do a PhD. The work that she did in her thesis for her PhD had an influence on the entire field. Her PhD was described by the professors at her institution as extraordinary and profound. And not many of us can claim that um, our PhD thesis, as much as we would like to think they were, uh, are up to that standard. She essentially, and this is in the 1960s, had a different way of looking at galaxies. And what she sort of founded was the study of galaxy evolution, the concept that galaxies weren't just unchanging objects, but they were collections of stars. They were stellar populations, which could be present in different mixes and evolve differently over time. And that even though we might not see in our lifetime a single galaxy evolve, we could trace over cosmic time by looking back further in redshift to the earlier parts of the universe, we could actually see these changes in galaxy populations. So using the crude computers that were, by our standards, available in the 1960s, she as a theoretician created the first computer models of galaxy evolution by synthesizing all of this really brand new information about nucleosynthesis, chemical evolution in stars, put it all together to calculate models of how we think galaxies would evolve. And so in doing so, she really founded this whole field, the field which most of us here in Nottingham work on, the field of galaxy evolution. She touched on the fact that galaxies could be influenced by their external environment, that mergers could be important in changing galaxy properties. And then she linked all this into the study of cosmology as well, because at that time, galaxies were to some extent used as standard candles. We considered that they were unchanging, and so we could use this to, to, to measure, essentially, the scale of the universe. And so she uh, incorporated these ideas of galaxy evolution into looking at the question of what's the ultimate fate of our universe? Is it open and expanding forever? or is it closed and eventually going to contract? So yes, a pretty impressive amount of work to pack into such a short um, career. Her strength was her innovation, her creativity, her bravery in 
putting together new ideas and taking them those, those steps further to see where they would lead us. And so, you know, that was her scientific legacy. Although I, of course, have never met her. She died when I was a child of cancer at the age of 40. Um, she is spoken about by all the people who knew her, obviously as a, a strong personality. You can't do what she did without having some outstanding characteristics. Um, but also her particular legacy was the way she interacted with and mentored younger colleagues and really encouraged students, early researchers, um, forward in their work. And that's spoken about universally when, when people talk about her. Even though her achievements were really recognized straight away in the field, she was unable to get a permanent academic position in Dallas where she lived with her husband and her family. And this, this went on for, for a very, very long time and eventually led to the breakup of, of their family. She ended up moving to Yale University to take up her professorship there, um, but she only got to enjoy that position for a few years before she um, prematurely died at the age of 40.